In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a technique that we refer to as twice baking to go from this image to this final image in just a matter of seconds. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pai. Welcome back to Adorama TV. It is wonderful being here with y'all. Today we're talking post-production and I'm gonna show you a technique that we refer to as twice baking. The reason we call it that is because essentially the workflow goes like this. You're gonna use Lightroom or a raw processing software to process an image, usually for skin tone. Then we're gonna take it into another application, either Photoshop or Luminar, replace the sky, and then we're gonna take it back to Lightroom and process it one more time, hence twice baking. So at this point, I want you guys to pause the video, go ahead and go down to the download link so you guys can download the exercise file so you can follow along. With the exercise file downloaded, let's jump straight in. Now you're looking at a shot of me and my family and it was captured by my good friend, Michelle Ford. We will link her below so you can check her out on IG. And uh, I think Michelle later regretted this offer, but as a late Mother's Day gift, she said, why don't I take your family out? We'll do a couple shots. And then she later told me how nervous she was doing that. And I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I thought she was doing a great job, but apparently it was very stressful for Michelle. So offer your condolences to her. Now what we're looking at is this beautiful image. I love the expressions and everything about this, but you'll notice that a good portion of the sky is blown out. Now what I often like to do is process the image for skin tone first. So I'm gonna use Visual Flow presets. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through everything so that you guys can use whatever presets, whatever applications you guys want to use. But this will help us to get there a little bit quicker. So we're gonna begin with step one. That is to process the image the first time inside of Lightroom. Usually I would process for skin tone. So what I'm gonna do is go to our pastel pack and I'm gonna choose backlit. Now this is a lighting condition based development system and backlit is based on images that have a loss of contrast. So it's gonna add that contrast back. I'm also gonna go ahead and just add profile correction. And then let's kind of just make an exposure and contrast adjustment. And I'm gonna show you everything that's being done with this preset. Okay, so right about here, it looks pretty good. If I zoom in and kind of look at overall skin tones, I like it. I might warm it up just a tiny bit more. And right about here, it's great. So now the sky is completely gone, but I love the way that we look. Now what's happening over here on the right side is we're pulling the highlights down, pulling the whites down, adding shadows and pulling down blacks. If we drop into the tone curve, if I turn this on and off, you'll notice that this tone curve is adding a lot of exposure and overall contrast with an S-shaped curve. At any point, feel free to pause the video. You can dial in a similar tone curve. This is an S-shaped curve. You can see that the mid-tones are being pulled up quite a bit. This is adding exposure to the image. I've also flattened the highlights as well as the shadows just a bit inside of this look. Now dropping into HSL. This is where a lot of our magic is happening. So once again, you can pause the video and dial in these settings. But this is what's giving the image kind of a, a very subtle, soft kind of pastel look. We're shifting red hues, we're shifting saturation, we're also building this over a profile that's kind of designed to have a, a subtle sort of filmic look to it. Uh, but we're pulling red saturation, orange, yellows down, we're really substantially pulling the greens down, as well as the blues. And what ends up happening is we get a very soft and sort of muted look to the overall color. We do also add a bit of split toning. We're adding a little bit of warmth into the highlights, a little bit of teal or blues into the shadows. Um, and then let's go ahead and go down to detail. There's no actual detail or noise reduction or anything being applied to this. What I might do at this point is zoom in a little bit and just add a little bit of noise reduction here um, just to eliminate kind of the, the noise on the face a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go up to plus 40. And that's about it. We've also added that profile correction for our lens corrections, okay? So already we've gone from this kind of image to an image like this where it's processed for skin, but everything is just blown out. So now we're gonna go to step two. I'm gonna use Luminar, but you guys can use Photoshop or whatever you'd like to add in the sky. Now you'll see why I use Luminar and these are the settings that I would use for it. So if you look at the copy file options, I take it to Luminar as a JPEG, sRGB, 8-bit and uh, 300 resolution for the DPI. That way I have a printable file. Um, we have to go to 8-bit for Luminar anyway, 
but it's gonna be fine. The colors are gonna still look great. It's gonna still look fantastic in print. But what this is gonna allow me to do is do sky swaps very, very quickly and convincingly, okay? So all I'm gonna do once I'm into Luminar is I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right side where we have this creative panel. We're gonna go to sky replacement. And all I have to do to change the sky, because this is AI based, is I just choose whatever sky looks good. You can load in your own sunsets, you can load in your own skies, whatever you want, or you can use these kind of previously defined skies. Now, as I flip through here, the important piece of this is finding a sky that actually matches or fits the overall lighting of the image. And you'll notice that right now the sun is coming from this left side, but our shadows are coming from the right side of this image. So whenever you're replacing a sky, whether you're using Photoshop or another application like Luminar, you want to make sure that the light source in that sky matches the light source in that scene. That is step number one. So I'm going to go with this one and you'll notice it doesn't match, but we have an option here under the advanced settings to flip the sky. Now we look at this and go, okay, as a photographer, it's like, is the light source exactly? Well, it probably is more so to the right, but honestly, once we're finished with this, a viewer is going to look at this and they're not going to have that. It's close enough that the illusion is going to work. Okay. But what we need to do is make adjustments to the overall settings. But you'll notice that Luminar has already done a great job of basically blending the sky in with the leaves and everything. And this is something that would take us quite a bit of time inside of Photoshop. Is it perfect? No, we're going to actually make some adjustments to it now with the AI based tools, right? So what I'm going to do is change my horizon blending. I'm going to just kind of blend it. So it's a little bit of a softer transition. Um, and you know what, actually let's leave that there and let's use a graduation for it. I'm going to use the horizon, horizon position to adjust the position of where this is dropping in on the horizon. So we'll put it about right there. Now relight scene is going to change the colors in the scene to kind of fit the sky. I do like to do this, but I like to save it for last. Okay. What we're going to do is make some adjustments to uh, close gaps. Close gaps is going to kind of make it fit better with the leaves. So it's going to kind of close all the gaps between leaves and branches and trees. And this is where I love, you know, applications like Luminar because just this feature, it, it does so much more than just sky replacement, but just this feature alone, if you're doing sky replacements often makes the price of the application worth it. Okay. So it's something that we use regularly in our workflow and I wouldn't suggest anything that we don't regularly use. Um, now we're going to go down to sky local is another one of the AI adjustments that I'll kind of like tweak just to see um, what it's going to do. Usually it does a little bit of this blending and you can see it over clothing that's particularly white or areas that are white in an image. So I might just adjust the blend a little bit there. This looks great. Now what I need to do at this point, and this is a big, big piece is you'll notice that the brightness of the sky doesn't match the brightness of the image. Now there's a piece inside of Luminar, which I have to take credit for because we suggested to the engineers and they built it in. And I said, there needs to be this opacity slider that allows us to control the opacity of the sky because I need to take it down in most instances and they built it in. It is the atmospheric haze slider. So usually I end up pulling this all the way up to hundred for an image like this that was processed bright. I would leave it at hundred. I'm also going to just add a little bit of additional sky exposure to this. And if we wanted to, we could tweak the temperature uh, a bit. So I'm going to just warm it a tiny bit to sort of match the surrounding uh, leaves and, and are those leaves? No, grass, the surrounding grass. Now the last thing I'm going to do is just go to edit mask and go gradient mask. And I'm going to click and drop this gradient kind of right over this spot. And I just want it to sort of blend subtly across the image as it drops in. Okay. That's it. And this is what I love about this is all I have to do at this point is press apply. It's going to apply all those changes and adjustments. It's put a sky back in. Now we don't have to go in and do any nitty gritty masking or any, you know, color selections or anything like that in Photoshop. It's done. When you do this on your own, it's a matter of seconds as opposed to minutes. It saves you a dramatic amount of time. Now we go to step three. We are back inside of Lightroom and we're going to twice bake the image by applying another preset or another look over it. So this go around. Now that I have this soft kind of tone and overall, I want to create a more punchy vibe. So what I'm going to do is select from the crush pack. Okay. So I'm going to choose soft light from the crush pack. 
And what it's gonna do is just amp up everything. I'm gonna walk you again through all the settings. So don't worry, if you guys don't want to, if you don't have this system, don't wanna get the system, no worries. I'm gonna show you what settings are being applied. You can use any presets of your own for this, but essentially what we're doing is we're applying a second effect over the image, right? What I'm gonna do as well is drop in a radial burn. All that does is it places a radial burn filter right over the center of the image. I like to, I've taught you guys in a different tutorial to save this out as a preset so you guys can do it quickly and easily because all we're gonna do is bring that point over the subjects, hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, click and drag the exposure one side or the other to strengthen or reduce the strength of the effect. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast to the image right about here is good. Okay, so what's happening in this second pass is again, we're making some subtle adjustments to base tones, but you'll notice here in the tone curve, there's a substantial S curve being added once again, that's putting contrast back into the image. Now, because we started with a very clean and simple palette, depending on where you start with your first processing and then where you go with the second processing, the second twice baked look, it's gonna determine the look of the image. And that's what makes this so fun because this mixture of settings is gonna change it up every single time. So we end up with this subtle skin tone, but this beautifully impactful image with these settings. Another big piece of what Crush is doing is it's adding a lot of dehaze and to compensate because dehaze will bring back a lot of the tones in the sky and a lot of the blues. To compensate, we're doing a, a lot of manipulation down here in the HSL. So we're taking the red saturation, the orange is down, the yellow's down, even the blue's down. We're adding hue to the blues to make sure that the colors don't shift too much. Again, this is a great place to pause and just dial in the same settings for yourself if you wanna match the overall look. Uh, that's really it. Sometimes I like to kill the sharpening. If you applied sharpening on the first preset, I wouldn't apply it again on the second go around. I would leave it a little bit soft. So I'm just gonna remove the sharpening, remove the noise reduction uh, from the preset. And then that's great. What I might do now is go back up to blacks and I'm just gonna add a little bit of blacks back into the image just to kind of give it a more soft sort of look. And then I'll bring the exposure down a little bit and kind of just play with the uh, contrast a little bit until we get to a good spot. I might even reduce this uh, radial filter just a little, okay? And then instead of it, I'm gonna bring in a graduated filter that is just set to burn. And we're gonna just pull down the sky a little bit. We're gonna pull up from the bottom a little bit. That way we have uh, not as much of a noticeable vignette in the image. I don't like it when we can kind of see our vignettes so clearly. And let's see if we wanna make a slight temperature tweak. I do kind of want to bring it down just a, a tiny, tiny bit, okay? Right there. You guys can make whatever subtle fine-tuning adjustments you want to make to the image at this point. But I want you guys to see now the before and after on this image because it's pretty fun, the overall look and effect we created. So using the twice-baking technique, just in a matter of moments, you can go from these raw files to these final images and create a really cool style that your clients, your subjects are gonna absolutely love. These are the types of images that we love to blow up and hang on our walls. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd love for y'all to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Adorama TV and turn on your notifications so I can see you all next week when we come back with another video. If you guys would like links to all the applications and software that we used for this, including Visual Flow presets as well as Luminar and Lightroom, go to the description below. We'll link up everything there and hope you all enjoyed. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.